<laughs> a tent! I wonder what it's doing here. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. Look at this tent. Isn't it fantastic? I don't know what it's doing here, though. Maybe there's someone inside. Hello? Is there anybody there? Hello? Oh! <laughs> the doorway's moving. I think there's someone or something inside. Hey, maybe an alien landed during the night. <laughs> Do aliens like camping? I don't know. Don't be scared. I won't hurt you. <laughs> oh dear, it's a giant caterpillar. Small. It's me, Small. It's Ben. Small. Oh, oh I feel a bit wobbly. Whoa, oh, timber. Oh, oh. 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 It's only me, Small. Oh, hello, everyone. I've just been trying out my sleeping bag. You gave me a bit of a fright there, Ben. <laughs> Sorry, Small. It's just I'm going camping soon and I wanted to try out my new camping gear. Camping? Is that when you sleep in a tent under the stars? Uh-huh. Can I come? Of course you can, Small. It wouldn't be any fun unless you came along. <laughs> hey, I've even got you your very own little sleeping bag. <laughs> oh, brilliant. My very own sleeping bag. Hey, Small, that's not all I've got in here. I've also got lots of other special equipment that we need for when we go camping. I've got a torch here so we can see in the dark. And I've also got a toothbrush to keep our teeth nice and clean. <laughs> and I've even got a teddy bear to snuggle up to at bedtime. <laughs> oh, and what's this? Oh, no. The lining's come out of your sleeping bag, Ben. Oh, dear, Small. Oh, if the lining comes out of my sleeping bag, I won't have anything to keep me nice and warm. Well, don't worry, Ben. We'll just put something else in there. Well, we'll have to worry about that later, Small. Sounds like we've got a customer. I'm on my way. Woohoo! So who is it, Small? Who's our customer today? Well, she has soft feathers and a big beak. <laughs> oh, and what sound does she make? Honk, honk. <laughs> oh, so she has feathers and a beak and she honks when she speaks. Anything else? You're going to be amazed when you hear this. She's golden. Wow, so she has feathers and a beak and she honks when she speaks, and her feathers are actually golden. I think I know who it is. Is it Goldie, the golden goose? You're right, Ben. And she's a beautiful sight to see. Now, how do we decide what to cook for a golden goose? I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Once, whilst I was sailing in the Pacific Ocean, I discovered a forgotten island. Through my binoculars, I could see that the island was dotted with lots of small hills. And on each of the hilltops, some very unusual birds had built their nests. I decided to go ashore and take a closer look. It was a very pretty place. The green grass was sprinkled here and there with golden feathers, which sparkled in the sun. <laughs> I hiked to the top of one of the hills, and there, sitting on top of her nest, I saw the most beautiful golden goose. Oh, hello, hello there. W welcome to Golden Goose Island. Honked the goose. Would, would, you, would you like to see my three golden eggs? Oh, yes, I'd love to, I replied. But when the golden goose showed me her eggs, she realised that instead of three glittering golden eggs sitting safely in the nest, there are only two. One of the eggs had rolled down the side of the hill. It was lying in the grass below. Oh, no. The golden goose flew down to the egg 
and tried to nudge it up the hill with her beak. But it kept rolling back down again. Oh, oh, well, whatever shall I do? She cried. I thought for a moment and then suddenly I had an idea. I know. I can balance the egg on my spoonmobile. It was a tricky job. The golden egg was quite heavy. But eventually, I slipped it back into the nest, safe and sound. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, cried the golden goose, and she let out a great honk of joy. Honk! Ho, ho, ho! Little cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. So the golden goose had all her eggs safely in her nest, thanks to your quick thinking, Small. Way! That spoonmobile of yours is really handy. Thanks, Ben. But we still don't know what to cook for Goosey. Mm. Oh! I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course, the Big Cookery Book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book. In the book. In Big Cook's Book. Ho oh, ho, here we are, Small. I found just the right recipe for Goldie the Goose. Golden plum eggs. So what are we waiting for? <laughs> you read out the ingredients, little cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need plums. Over we go, in the fruit bowl. Plums, lovely, got them. Sugar. In the cupboard, sugar. Yes, got the sugar, Small. Chocolate. Chocolate in the fridge. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Lovely chocolate. Yep. And creme fraiche. Oh, creme fraiche. Yes. That is tasty. Got that as well. Here we are. Everything we need for the recipe. Great. There's just one thing that's bothering me, though, Small. What's that? Well, I don't know where plums come from. Do you? Uh, no. <laughs> well, why don't you whiz off and find out, little cook, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea. See you later. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Hey, why don't you come along too? Way! Go small, go small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. There's a train. Choo choo. This is the right place. I've come to an orchard where plums grow. Joseph is going to pick some plums. That's it. Reach up high. Oh, look at these juicy plums, Libby. Now Libby's having a go. Plums are a fruit and they grow on trees. They start off green and then they slowly turn purple. Like these. They're ripe and ready to eat. Wow! They've picked lots of plums. Plums are juicy and very good for you. They're delicious. Better get back to the cafe. Bye. Oh, my sleeping bag looks like it's been leaking for ages. There's hardly any stuffing left. Well, hey, I'm back. I had a great time. 
I found out that plums are a fruit that grow on trees. And when they're ready to eat, they go a lovely purpley colour. Mmm, sounds delicious. Now let's get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. <music> Jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to golden plum eggs? You do. There were plums, three, sugar, one dessert spoon, chocolate, two squares, and creme fraiche, four tablespoons. Whoopee! Let's get started. OK, the first thing we need to do is pour the sugar into a saucepan and then half fill the saucepan with water like this that's about right and then we can turn on the heat and warm up the sugar and the water until it starts to boil and remember this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because it's a hob job and the hob is hot 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 <laughs> Shh. while Benny's busy I'm going to go and try and find something to line the sleeping bag with. <laughs> hey, I wonder if we've got any cotton wool. And this is another job for your grown-up helper to do. They need to score the plums using a knife, which means making little cuts down the side of the plums to make it easier for the skin to peel away later. So once we've done that, I'm going to pop the plums into the boiling sugary water, like this and we need to keep them in there for four minutes and just pop the lid on to keep all the heat in there we go now they need to cook until the skin starts to peel away but make sure that they keep their shape because these are going to be our golden eggs way look i've got a cotton bud sword uh small may i ask why you're waving that cotton bud I was looking for cotton wool to fill the lining of your sleeping bag, Ben. But I could only find cotton buds. Ho oh, ho! Cotton buds would make my sleeping bag feel really uncomfy. Can you think of anything else we could use? Leave it to me, Ben. I'll get back to you. Once the plums are ready and they've had time to cool, we can start to peel off the skins like this. And this is the really fun bit, especially when the skin peels off nice and easily like this. Hey! Now, what else could I fill Ben's sleeping bag with? When you've peeled off all the skin, it's time to take out the stones. Now, there's one stone in each plum, and this is quite a tricky job. You've got to be very careful, because we need to keep that plum shape. Nice and careful. There we are. There's one. Those plums smell great! <laughs> hey Ben, I've decided to pad out the lining of your sleeping bag with some of my socks. Um, are they clean? Well, some are, but I didn't have enough clean ones, so some of them are a bit cheesy. <laughs> well, I'm not having your cheesy socks anywhere near my sleeping bag, thank you very much. Oh, listen to you, Mr Fussy Pot. I was <laughs> only trying to help. Well, thanks for helping, but I think we need to get on with the recipe. Right, I've taken all the stones out of the plums now. One, two, three. So I'm going to spoon the creme fraiche into a bowl and then make a little nest shape like this. Be careful, Ben! <laughs> oh, no! Don't worry, Ben. I'll just lick it up. Mmm. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, sorry, small. 
<laughs> right. Now it's time to grate the chocolate onto a plate. This is a job for your grown-up helper to do. Great some this way, Ben! <laughs> oh, small! <laughs> this is for the recipe, not for you! <laughs> OK, we've grated a bit of that there. So now, we can sprinkle the chocolate onto our creme fraiche nest. Like this. Oh, yes, there we go. It looks just like a nest now. So, finally, we can pop on the plum eggs in the middle, like this. And there it is. That looks delicious. Quick, Ben, let's get it to Goldie the Goose straight away. Right you are, little cook. Golden plum eggs coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha, here comes the plate. Ho oh, ho, yes! And it looks like Goldie the Goose enjoyed her golden plum eggs. Look, Small, she's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Ho oh, ho! Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you for my licky lumptious golden plum eggs. You are fantastic cooks. Way! I am sorry that Ben's sleeping bag has lost some of its stuffing. Here's some golden goose down to use as new stuffing. It will make it cosy again. Oh yes, and thank you Small for rescuing my runaway egg. It hatched last week and I named the baby gosling Small after you. Happy honks from Goldie the Goose. Wow, and she named her baby gosling after me, Ben. Isn't that sweet? Oh, very sweet Small. And what about my golden goose down? Whoa! This looks really nice and warm. Hey, Ben, does that mean we can go camping now? It certainly does. Hey! hey. <laughs> See, you, See soon. you soon! Bye! Oh. Big cook, little cook, welcome to our cafe. Big cook, little cook, we'll cook for him.